السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. In the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى, most gracious, most merciful. الحمد لله رب العالمين. All praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى, Lord of the worlds. والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد. Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household, all his companions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single one of us. My brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and we will be returning straight to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he made us, he made us appear on earth only for a few decades in the case of the average. Most of us don't realize that in a few years' time, in a few days' time, in a short span of time, these bodies will no longer be holding the souls that are in them at the moment. And they will continue separated and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then judge us. So whatever you do in terms of goodness in this world is what will come to your rescue. As for this body, it is not actually yours. You need to know this. It is only an amana, a trust entrusted to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a short space of time. And this is why you cannot do what you want to this body. You have to do what your maker wants. It belongs to him. Someone who gives you a motor vehicle to keep for a month or two, you cannot do what you want to that motor vehicle because you are not the owner. Now, what we need to realize is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being the creator would never ever make us without sending for us reasons why he has created us. He needs to let us know why he made us. And in order to send that message to us, he chose messengers. The highest of whom is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in rank. And at the same time, he sent messages with these messengers. And the most powerful of all these messages is the Quran. The Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to be connected to this word of the maker if we want to be connected to the maker himself. Nobody, absolutely nobody can be connected to the maker without being connected to the words of that particular maker. So remember this, the closer you are to the word of Allah, the closer you will be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you were a boss, at a workplace, perhaps an employer, and you were to have people working for you, paying them a salary, promising them that at the end of the month, I will give you X amount. What will you give them the amount for? For them to fulfill instructions, for them to do as the work requires them to do. If they do something that happens to be detrimental, you might even deduct from their salary, or you might not pay them, or you might sue them or fire them. So why is it we understand this so clearly, but when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we tend to still think that what He has promised us at the end of our day's work, not actually a day, but a lifetime of work, we still think we deserve it when we've broken every rule in the book. May Allah forgive us. And this is why we have the month of the Quran to help us connect to this word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how is it that I am meant to be connected to the beautiful word of Allah? Number one, I need to consider it a gift of Allah. Number two, I need to consider myself fortunate to be from among the ummah that has this word of Allah which is untouched. Allah says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidun. We have indeed sent down this reminder and we will protect it. Allah has protected it. You and I know it is unchanged from the beginning to this day. We read it, many of us here may have memorized it off by heart. If the Imam was to make an error, just with a wa and a fa, perhaps a lot of us would know it is our right to, to scream out what is correct because the word belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand this. So Allah says he will protect the word. I want to let you know something powerful. If Allah has said he will protect the Quran, Anyone who has made an effort to learn the Quran, to memorize it, to put it into practice, to teach it to others, automatically they have to be protected by Allah. 
Because Allah promises, I will protect the Quran. You made it your business to protect the Quran, meaning to look after it in your heart, in your deeds. Allah will look after you because you are a moving Quran. And this is why it's important for us to know that those who have memorized the Quran, they have a special status in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they need to try their best to put that Quran into practice. Many of us, mashallah, we've memorized the Quran. Shaitan then comes to us in order to divert us. So you find such people in the clubs, such people on drugs, such people who might have bad habits, perhaps alcohol and so on. We need to come back to Allah. We need to connect back with this Quran. We want the Quran to protect us. It will because it is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why my brothers and sisters, those who suffer from waswasa or perhaps the whisperings of the jinn, and they suffer perhaps from superstitious matters that might be affecting their minds. Remember, if you are to read the Quran correctly and connect with it, you will never be affected. It is a guarantee from Allah. You read your Ayatul Kursi thrice, morning and evening. You read the last three surahs of the Quran, morning and evening. You will never ever be affected by the jinn, by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you were to understand your connection with the Quran, will disconnect you from the shaitan. You need to know this. The more you are connected with the Quran, the more you are disconnected with the shaitan. And if you are finding yourself more connected to the shaitan, more prone to his plan, more, for example, uh, receptive to what shaitan is beaming, you, you need to know there is something wrong with your link with the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. This is why brothers and sisters never leave your home, never ever leave your home when the day commences without having read a little bit of the Quran. But that is not our only duty to connect with the Quran. Recital is extremely important. To need to learn how to read the Quran is very, very important. That journey will take us all the way to death. Nobody, absolutely nobody has perfect recitation. That was for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and perhaps some of the companions who almost got there. But for the rest of us, the journey of correction of the Quran and its recitation and pronunciation and tajweed and so on is a lifelong journey to the last minute. We need to understand this is the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what he wants. He wants us to continue and spend an entire lifetime with his word. Every day we read it, we are connected to him, we love him, he loves us, he looks after us. One day we go back to him and we will be told on the day of judgment. Subhanallah. What will we be told on the day of judgment? Yuqalu li sahibi al-Qur'an. A person who has bothered to connect himself with the Qur'an, known as a person of the Qur'an. Some of the scholars say this is referring to a hafiz. Some of the scholars say it's referring to anyone who's memorized any portion of the Qur'an. I'd like to go with the latter opinion because it includes all of us. Someone who's memorized any portion of the Qur'an, almost 100% of us have memorized Surah Al-Fatiha, haven't we? Well, thank Allah, because you know some of the Qur'an. Such a person will be told on the Day of Judgment, Iqra, wartaqi, warattil, kama kunta turattilu fi dunya, fa inna manzilaka inda akhiri ayatin taqra'uha. Read and continue ascending. Your ranks, read and continue going up the ranks. And read in the same way you used to read when you were on earth. And your final rank will be where you get stuck, where you stop, wherever you are stuck. And you will get stuck according to how you practiced upon the Quran. A melodious reading does not necessarily mean you're a good Muslim. But when you practice upon the recitation, it means you're a good Muslim. And this is why my brothers and sisters never ever rush with the Quran. The most powerful statement that shakes me, makes me cry and wakes me up is when Allah says, I will tell you to read only the way you used to read in the world. You will not be able to read in another way on the day of judgment. So if you used to rush and work through the Quran and complete your taraweeh, which starts at seven o'clock at quarter past seven, you can expect the type of recitation on the day of judgment as well as an embarrassment. Imagine the word of Allah. We are rushing through it. What an insult. Let's change the attitude to the Quran. Connect with it. Listen to a recitation that is melodious and beautiful so that you are honored by being able to read in a similar manner on the day of judgment in front of your own maker. But if you are the one who loves to rush through it, you've got no time for the book of Allah. What type of time do you want Allah to make for you? And what type of recitation do you expect when the hadith clearly says, Kama kunta turattilu fid dunya, Only in the same way that you used to read while you were on earth. 
I hope this is a powerful, powerful lesson for us forever and ever to be able to change the way we look at listening to the Quran and reading the Quran. Never ever insult Allah. Never insult Allah. It is the month of the word of Allah. It is the month of this powerful word that will protect you from the evil of this world and the next. Subhanallah. Some of the surahs, Allah says, whoever reads this surah, for example, you will have a nur, you will have sustenance, you will have this. There are so many virtues of so many of these beautiful surahs, but that is not for the one who whips through the surah as though he is knocking a donkey. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Really, we need to go back and revisit Wallahi, we need to revisit our connection with the Quran. Are you plugged in today? And I've given this example almost every day because it is a reality. We spend so much of time on our phones. Doing what? Absolutely nothing. Surfing the internet, sometimes on pornography, na'udhu billah. Sometimes with haram relations, na'udhu billah. Sometimes just with deals. What about your maker? The one who owns absolutely everything connected to you and your existence. You cannot spend 10 minutes more with him in order to read the book with a beautiful tilawa. Never be shy to make your voice as melodious as possible, no matter what people around you might think. Do it for the sake of Allah. Some people are embarrassed. When they read Quran, they are embarrassed to intonate their voice in a beautiful way. Don't be that. Don't be from amongst those. This is the word of Allah. Read nicely. Sweeten your voice. It's for Allah. That is the only way you will be able to read on the Day of Judgment. Then we need to understand another way of connecting to the Quran, a powerful way, is, in, is to get to the meaning of the Quran, to get to the rules and regulations of the Quran. The two of them, one might come before the other. Some people know the rules and regulations without knowing the inner or depth, in-depth meaning, because perhaps they may not know the Arabic language. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, do you want Allah to come close to you? Well, you need to come close to Allah. The hadith says, Man atani yamshi ataytuhu harwala. Whoever comes to me walking, I come to him rushing. You try to learn the Arabic language because you want to understand the Quran. Watch how Allah rushes in your direction. Watch because an effort is required. Today, let's face facts. The most valuable thing that we are all stingy regarding is not money. Money is the second thing. The first thing is time. Every one of us values our time so much, we do not want to give it even to our own spouses sometimes. May Allah forgive us. We do not want to give it even to our family members sometimes. Whereas it is farad to a certain extent to dish out or distribute that time in this beautiful manner. Let us revisit our connection with Allah so we understand how to distribute our time as well. However, my brothers and sisters, the most important plug-in with your time is to make time for Allah. For your prayer, your five daily prayer will whiz through without you noticing that the time has passed. If you are not prepared to give time to Allah, give time, make the time. When the time of Fajr clocks in, do not sleep, get up, force yourself. That is when Allah comes in your direction. You have a beautiful day. Your depression is gone because Allah is the owner of cure and He has cured you. Your stress is gone. Even though you might be facing financial challenges, you will realize that these challenges actually brought me closer to Allah. So they were a gift of Allah upon me. Your medical problems gone because owner of cure, a shafi is Allah. <laughs> Ibrahim alayhi salam saying, Allah is the one who is the curer. Whenever I am sick, he cures me. And when I pass away, when I die, it is Allah who is going to resurrect me once again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand the link that we are meant to be having with him through this powerful Quran. So make the time. Without making time, you will never ever be able to achieve things. A lot of us go to work. Trust me, we are more religiously in attendance at the workplace than we are in the prayer with the owner of absolute sustenance. Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. We are ready to please our bosses of this world and the employers because of the rand and the dollar that we will achieve fortnightly or perhaps every month. But what about Allah? We will miss the salah. We will miss everything else. We don't read the Quran. We're not bothered about the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is just a reality check. I really do not mean to doom anyone. I am in the same boat. Trust me. We all need to improve. Every one of us, no matter how much your link is with the Quran, don't you agree we can do better? No matter how much of salah you read, don't you agree we can do better in terms of quality to start with and then quantity? 
The most important thing is quality. If you are to read half a page of Quran a day with solid quality, Wallahi, it is better than reading the entire Quran a day, insulting Allah, going through it as though it is just the word of any ordinary person. Na'udhu Billah. The hadith makes it clear. Khayrul amali ma alayh wa in qal. The best of deeds are those that are done regularly, even if it's very little. Remember this. So you just dedicate to Allah. Say, oh Allah, I will spend five minutes every morning, inshallah. I will just read one verse and I'll read the English of it with the translation. If I don't understand, when I go to the masjid, I will ask the imam for help. Is it too big to ask? Is it too much? Five minutes of your time early morning? The problem with us, if we have to get to work at seven o'clock, quarter to seven, we get up. The cup of tea in one hand, the shower in the other. May Allah forgive us. And the, the, the clothes in the other, one minute to seven, we out. And we're busy mourning at everybody there. When it comes to the, you know, the traffic, we are the worst in terms of how we drive and so on. And we are the Muslimin. Swearing this person and that person. Had you started your day at Fajr, trust me, you'd have been at work before the traffic. Subhanallah. It's stress-free, beautiful day. 30 minutes I've got time to get to work. It will only take me 15 minutes. I'm there 15 minutes before everyone else to greet them when they walk in. They see you with a smile. What will motivate them? How come you are so calm? I'm calm because I'm connected to the Quran. That's the reason. I'm calm because the Quran has disciplined me. If Allah wanted, Wallahi, He would have told us, you don't need to read Quran in Salah. You can read another book. Any book that inspires you, read it in Salah. But Allah says, you must read the most powerful thing in existence in my own words. Because I want you to connect with it, to feel the power. That power transfers to you to a certain extent. If you were to plug in correctly with that beautiful Quran. Yet we find ourselves, What you said you don't know, what happened you don't know. The only thing you know is you read something in Salah. After Salah I asked you what you read, what did you read? I can't remember. But it must have been Qul Allah because that's my favorite surah. Favorite because of what? Don't come and tell me because of the meaning, because of how short it is. Inna a'tayna and qul huwa Allah. Happen to be our favorite surahs in salah. It's a reality. Let's change that. Can't we connect with more of the Quran? Don't you know what duha? Don't you know alam nashrah? Don't you know other surahs? Can't you take five minutes more? May Allah forgive me. Wallahi, we all have a lot to improve. I see the smiles mean we are guilty. My brothers and sisters, it's a reality check. Wallahi, we are in the month of the Quran. We want to listen to the whole Quran in Salah. But when it comes to our Maghrib, we quick with these same, same surahs. Let's be honest. We don't even know what has happened. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Learn to concentrate. Learn to concentrate in Salah with the words of the Quran. Try and understand their meaning. Make an effort. Today, technology has made it so easily accessible to us. Yet we are guilty of not even going one step in that direction. People have their businesses online, they have their shopping online, they have their tickets online, their holidays online, but they plug in with Allah, it's available online, but then they are offline. Offline. What happened? Oh, the internet ran out. I don't know. May Allah forgive us. Really, it's about time we revisited. And this is why I've chosen to speak about this today because we are in Ramadan. It's not known as the month of Quran for nothing. Take your time, relax, enjoy the recitation, make the time. How do you make time? Let me give you one tip. One. There are many tips, but one. Cut out that which is unnecessary and futile. A lot of the times, if you look at your day, most of what you've done was absolutely unnecessary. You're sitting with the TV, doing what? Watching football. Watch, you know, watch your Quran. Sit with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do you need to sit and do something? Perhaps once in a while, you may want, you know, a little bit of a change, some recreation. No one is saying sport is completely haram, but within limits, alhamdulillah, it's there. But when you lose track of your limits with Allah, your salah goes, your Quran goes, how can we then encourage this type of sport? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So we need to strike a balance. Islam is all about balancing. And this is why we have the month of Ramadan to go back and check. Let's never ever be from among those who read the Quran in Ramadan. And once Ramadan is over, it's over. How much Quran are you reading now in this month? Ask yourself. I hope the answer is some amount. Sometimes there are huffar who have memorized the Quran, who may not be leading the taraweeh in Ramadan, who passed the entire month without really having completed that Quran. Yet they have memorized it in terms of memory. That is... Guilty, trust me, the link with Allah, what an insult. But let's talk about every one of us. 
Surely in Ramadan, I hope we've improved in our recitation. Keep it up even after Ramadan. Make that promise today. It's not impossible. Get up as you are getting up now. You know, I know of people who get up for suhoor. Suhoor meaning the pre-dawn meal just before you start the fast. But five minutes later, they go to sleep and they miss Salat al-Fajr. Do you know that? There are people who would get up for a meal, but not get up for the spiritual meal, which is Salah. Without which you actually do not survive. You cannot survive. Let's not insult Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Learn to strike the balance. Learn to understand. My brothers and sisters, the goodness that we have in this beautiful month of Ramadan, don't you wish that it continued forever and ever? Well, if that is the case, Allah gives you a discount and Allah tells you, in this beautiful month, we will multiply every letter you read outside Ramadan, you get 10 rewards. Imagine, clock it. Let's say 10 rands. We in South Africa, the rand has crashed, sadly. May Allah strengthen it. I mean. But let's just say 10 rands. One US dollar. Sorry, I don't have that rate. I'm just giving you that rate. 10 rands, one US dollar. If that 10 rewards was 10 rands, and you had to say, Alif Lam Mim, and you got 30 rands for that. One, one, one. I think all of us would be sitting, you would actually tell me to keep quiet and go and do my thing. Because everyone wants these rands. By the time I finish Surah Al-Fatiha, I've got maybe 35 million rands already sitting there. MashaAllah, I can now buy a house in Midrand. Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. My brothers and sisters, if it was cash, we were ready to do it. Wallahi, it is more valuable than cash. Wallahi, it is something that will take you to Jannah. Khalidina fiha abadan. Forever and ever. Not just 20 years in this world. You happy because now I'm 50 years old. I can finally afford a car and a house. And mashallah, I'm married and so on. So, what about forever and ever? You need value, you need currency for akhirah. That currency will be your connection with the Quran, the connection with the word of Allah, how much you are adopting it, how much you are practicing it, how much you have made it's halal, halal, and it's haram, haram. And inshallah, you will continue to progress further and further. So connect yourself with the Quran. I cannot imagine in Ramadan, Allah multiplies the reward in an even greater way. So you have not 10 rewards for one letter, but even more because it's Ramadan. Come on, make... Make use of this beautiful sale that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. My brothers and sisters, I've said a few words. I feel motivated myself. I hope I can stay on this level and I hope I can even progress. And I ask the same for all of you. Wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.